Hey guys, welcome back. Um, sorry I haven't done a video in a while. I've been very busy with um, school related things, so yeah. Um, I want to get <clears throat> talk about doing some maintenance on some cars. Uh, this is my Sandstorm. This is my first hobby grade RC car ever. Um, but when I was driving it the other day, you can. not supposed to wiggle that much which isn't good so kind of wanted to fix that I, th I know these are bushings instead of bearings in here and I have bearings on the way from Amazon but <clears throat> problem is is that I hope they're the right ones. My dog bones in decent shape. Um, pump that out. Slide the pin out. Make sure not to lose the pin. Um, and pump this out. So. It's a bushing here that rubs on the plastic in there. And then there's the bushing. So you can see that bushing's in not great shape. Sadly, I don't have any bearings that fit that size. The only one that comes close is this one. And it fits on here. Nope, wrong one. These ones. Fits on here. But it's too small for here. So hopefully the bearings I'm getting will fit. I can't really drive it like that because it just it rattles way too much. So... So let's see when you put it in. It wiggles. Yes, I know it's supposed to have a little bit of play, but there, right there is where it's where it sits. It's easily a few millimeters of play. That's not good. The front ones are even worse. They wiggle. Yeah, that's that's not good. So I'll just pop everything back in there, because that needs bearing instead of bushings. And this needs a really good cleaning. This thing is dirty. It's, ew, it's just nasty. I got these little pliers at a junkyard the other day. They're actually, I thought that they wouldn't be useful, but it's kind of funny because they are pretty useful. Nice thing about plastic um, links is that you could just pop them in and out of the ball bearing. I mean, I'm sorry, the ball joint. I do prefer metal ones, but then you have to unscrew all of them. It's just a pain. Slide that back in. Put the nut on. Yeah, that needs, needs a lot more maintenance. And if you guys are wondering, that's a homemade RC stand, which is just what is it? It's four inch square to square stock with what is this five? No. Um three eighths um or thinner, maybe one fourth inch stock on the top. It's a little bent because it was scrap. Then a big planetary gear on the bottom. I mean it weighs like 12 pounds. It's pretty heavy. So, I mean, it really does help with working on these. I have a galvanized one out in the garage, but it needs a little bit. It's a little bit too big for these. It's for more like 1 8 scale. So, what's happening on the piranha? I'm sorry I haven't done a really a running video on this yet. I should. But I've been busy with school stuff, so. Okay. So 
What do we got? There? We got battery. So I just put in a new motor on this thing yesterday. So I took out the original. No, oh, that's not it. Crap. Here it is. 27 turn brushed motor. It's rated for 4S because all red cats are rated for a weird S. Um, slotted shaft, 27 turn, 24 or 12 gauge, 16 gauge wire with the connectors. Um, it worked, but I'd rather have this on the buggy, which I haven't showed you yet, not the sandstorm. There's a new buggy I have, it's in, it's in the works, it needs a lot of work, and I don't want to do that all on camera and have to edit that. Um, so what have I done on here? I have put in... An Apex RC Products brushed motor, 540 can, 17 turn, rebuildable. This was about $20 motor. It's really nice. It's really, um, really uh, high RPMs. As you can see, there's different tires on here. This came, these tires came on the used buggy I bought off eBay. And, well, they have a little bit of sand in them that I've been running around in. And they need new tires. They're going to run a little bald because they're pro. They're pro lines. So they're, well, these ones are. And these are AKA. So I don't. But these are 1.8s by 4.14s. They need new rubber. I had to glue them, but it shouldn't be too hard to put new ones on there. Um, this thing's been performing great. It's like a daily driver of RC cars. I mean. Sandstorm was my daily driver for about two years before it kind of detonated those bushings. Um, the 3D printed car is out of action because it destroyed itself. I mean, this is basically the most reliable one I have, but it doesn't have that many modifications. Neither does Sandstorm. That one's completely stock, too. Uh, this, this... This is, I mean, I said I was going to put a brush the system in this, but that was cheap and, like, readily available. It was easy to get. I mean, because I could slap on a nice heat sink on here. And voila, I have a big brush motor. I mean, 17 turns, so I, this thing has, people say that the lower turns... They don't offer as much torque. I haven't noticed the difference between this and a 27 turn, so it's really nice. I noticed about the Piranha. I didn't know about this before. This darker black, which makes no sense, piece right here is aluminum. It's an aluminum um, mounted gearbox part here, and... That's really nice for heat dissipation. That really helps. Um, yeah, I'd wear, I had to solder these wires on, but otherwise, it's a really good performer. Um, it's really fast. It, the acceleration's a little bit, um, a little bit faster, I guess. But it, um, it gets a lot hotter, a lot faster. Because of those lower turns, it needs all the power. So, I mean, kind of makes sense. But, it's, it's not that big. I mean, you're not, oops, sorry about that. You're not touching all the time, so I mean, it's not really a big deal. Plug this in real quick and I'll show you. Yeah, that servo still worked great. That servo saver in reverse, though, was really floppy. But otherwise... So it actually sounds a little bit different, too. It, it's, uh... And it slows down a lot faster if you just try to coast. Because of the higher turns, it's got a lot more, uh... Resistance when you try to turn it. 
And it's not the gears being too tight, it's just I set it to what it was with the 27 turn, but yeah. Yeah, and, and it's got, it does insane um, tire ballooning. It's kind of scary, to be honest. Um, yeah, that's it's a little insane. I mean, for a brushed motor, I was not expecting that. I mean, the 27 turn did, you know, decent tire ballooning, but that's just ridiculous. I haven't decided what heat sink to put on. I mean, do you guys want to let me know? I was using this one, but as you could see how that went and chipped, I was in the gravel yesterday, and it just chipped it. And it, this fell off, like, probably four or five times. And I put the tallest fin on the top thinking, I got about an inch or two of, you know, room here, so it shouldn't, you know, hit anything. But no, the smallest rock would come up, and just pull it right off, and it was ridiculous. But this one doesn't have fins that stick out all the way down here. They only go to here, just past these little... They're supposed to have fan on it, but the fans don't work when the motor's running. They only work when the motor's an idle or really slow. But this doesn't feel like this is going to help with the heat dissipation. And, I mean, it's not hurting it, when I haven't run it with the heat sink, so I don't know. It's it's a work in progress. I mean I could cut off the three um fins and then put it on. I don't know yet. So yeah. This just needs a little bit of oil in the bushings. This is also bushing. I don't know why. Red Cat, please just do bearings. It's a lot easier on me. I don't, I don't know why they do. I mean, probably cost, but I mean, it's Chinese product. So, I mean, I don't know how much of a cost difference it would really be for them to just put in... To put in, you know, some cheap bearings. I wouldn't care if they were cheap either. Just put in some... Put in some damn bearings, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, this video is kind of ranting. Um, yeah, that's that's how that one's been. It's been fun though. This is this is a fun buggy. This isn't. I mean, I know they. If you go on reviews, you sit. You think it's beginner. It's got a waterproof ESC. It's got pretty decent motor. It comes with. I mean, nickel metal hydride is pretty. It's okay. It's not great. It's not a lipo. But you can put a lipo in here. I put a 50C, 5,000 milliamp hour 2S lipo in here, and it works just fine. And it, the, it's not recommended because it says the max is only, what was it, 35C discharge. The only thing it does then, if I put a bigger battery in here, like a lipo, and run it constantly at full speed, it just shuts down because of heat. The ESC gets too hot. So, it's perfect. Other than that, it's had no problems um except for that that rim i messed up one of the rims on the original tires so i did not leave those on there for very long um i mean the grip on those tires are okay but like the the, the rims are so thin and cheap that they just make they get all smashed up real easy so i mean if you want you know, and it'll actually perform better with, I mean, bigger tires means faster. So, I mean, it works. Um, the next car I got to work on, but this is going to be the longest time before you see this actually running properly. Right now, it is not running properly at all. This came with these, those Proline tires. I have no clue what this is. I don't know brand. I don't know what it is i just got off ebay for 65 bucks with those nice 60 dollars tires um the motor was shot this was a conversion from nitro i have this esc on here which is a 3s compatible waterproof chinese crappy thing put a new connector on it this is my battery tray because it was nitro so there's not a lot of room in here esc goes back there it's got a nice i believe this is a metal gear servo it's an acme racing b 
1026. So, I mean, I, I looked it up, and supposedly it's metal. If it's not, tell me. I don't think it really matters to me, because it's pretty torquey. It's older, but works. I need to set up the links on this. Those tires were not designed for this, because otherwise they'll show in the links. I should probably put metal ones on here. I mean, it's a little wobbly. It's weird, because the front's really tight. But the back ones are so weird. It's just so... They're so floppy. The front one's a, this front one's a little floppy, and this one's... Yeah. Um... I think it uses a 16-tooth gear, and it's a big, it's a big one. It's, wait, let me count it. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry, this 13-tooth. Weird. Um, yeah, but the motor goes back in. There's not a lot of room. That's why I chose that. That 17 turn that's on the Piranha was actually designed, and I bought it for this because this this doesn't have a lot of room but yeah um it's it's kind of weird without those tires it's really low to the ground but with them it's pretty high off the ground so i mean i have to get tires that are like that but i mean it's got a lot of suspension travel like easily two or three inches and i mean if all else fails, I could just take everything off here and use it for parts. I mean, a $60 parts car isn't uncommon, so I mean... I mean, a servo, that servo is probably like 20 bucks. Differential is probably like 20 bucks a piece. That differential is pretty... I actually bought one, a Red Cat one version of this. A little bit different. But it cost about 25 so I mean... And this has got a metal, aluminum part right here. The other one was plastic. I mean, and I also believe this has bearings. Any of these bearings will fit in the red cap, the sandstorm. Bearings or bushings? Sometimes hard to tell on these cars because sometimes they got covers. And it's easy to tell if you spin one side. Nope, those are bushings. Um, so, but they don't... Oh yeah, those are tight. They don't have any flex really at all. I mean, bushings are nice if they stay lubricated and you keep lubricating them, but... Especially the brass ones, they just wear out so quickly that it's like... You should just buy bearings from the get-go, or steel bushings. That's what I can only think of. Um, I'm just thinking. Yeah, these these got a really beefy differentials. I mean, yeah, they're diffs, but I mean, look at our. Well, that's a. Well, that's got bearings in it though. Yeah, but it's got a really big diff. I mean, that's not a small differential. Um, I don't know what to say about this car. It's my project car. The junkyard RC car, I guess you guys didn't really like it because none of you really watched it, so. Um, and it's also on hold. I don't really know what to do with it. kind of stuck. This is pretty fun, though. I mean... I mean, if this was just parts, I mean, it's got metal, threaded shocks. They're pretty big, I bet those are about 80 millimeter ones. Maybe even 90. I mean, it came with an ESC, but it kind of, it didn't kill itself. It just has a problem I need to fix. It's a 3S compatible, too. But, yeah, I mean, it's, it's got ball, um, I'm not a huge fan of these ball style cups at the end. I, I like the other ones where I could screw through the top of here. Because this is this pain. you got to pull this out. Then there's another hex in the back. 
that you gotta unscrew. And it's not, it's not fun to take apart, it's kind of time consuming. But this thing seems really well built otherwise. I mean, it's an aluminum pan, so it's not, it's not, you know, wimpy plastic. Pretty decent, you know, just, it just needs a lot of work, so. Uh, that's really it for this video. I just wanted to get a video out because I had a video for a while. Um, I'm really trying to get new ideas going too and just some of the old stuff running and get videos out for that too. So, yeah. So, I'll see you guys in the next video.